on Silly Moustache here. Uh, I think this is number four in my series, My Guitars. So I'm just looking at my two resonators today. Um, you probably know that there were two famous makes that were both connected, the National Guitar Company and the Dobro Guitar Company or whatever. Um, they were um, split into two from originally two brothers to Paris and I won't go into that history. I'm sure it is detailed far better uh, elsewhere on YouTube. Um, at some point I decided that I was going to be a bit of a blues man and I got myself a big old 12 string and um, a Chinese resonator tricone which wasn't, it wasn't very satisfying but then I acquired a National Style O Deluxe via eBay absolute perfection but oh so heavy and ear numbingly loud and so um, I decided that I was going to look for a wooden bodied National and here it is this one came up for sale in a shop about 40 miles, 40, 50 miles away from here. And um, so I went up with my National Style O Deluxe and um, and I said I'm interested in that Estralita. And so they took me upstairs and they sat me in a stool, gave me whatever I wanted, watched to see that I wasn't a crazy guy and uh, left me alone with it. I played it in ordinary tuning, it played quite nicely, that was fine. I put it into open D, D, A, D, F sharp, A, E, A, D, um, and um, I got my bottleneck out. nicely and so we made a deal the deal was a straight swap which was pretty foolish because the style O um, deluxe was worth much more than this I hadn't realized that check your facts before you go shopping um, and the second thing was when I got it home I realized well after some time I realized that there was something wrong with the setup and uh, it needed a neck reset this was a um, a 2011 yeah 2011 build and I bought it in 2015 and it needed a neck reset um, so I um, I went to my good friend Dave who had never done a neck reset on uh, a national before but he made some investigations and he did an absolutely perfect job so here it is <laughs> Estralita Deluxe. That body, of course, is big, big lumps of plywood. Still lighter than the uh, the, the bell brass nickel plated, beautiful um, style O Deluxe. But there we are. Going back a bit further in my history, 1975, I found myself in an area where there was a lot of bluegrass activity, and it became apparent that I needed to play Dobro. Ah, right. So I got one, and it was fine and uh, later I got an even better one which was lovely just Dobros pretty basic um, but I met a friend when I came down to the south coast in the eight was probably the 90s now and I met a lovely guy who had this Dobro oh, much prettier than mine um, and um, all this lovely stuff and uh, we got on very well and we used to sit in this very conservatory and play and I loved the look of this, but I didn't like the sound. 
preferred mine a lot more. Anyway, George, bless him, got very ill, terminally ill, and we all knew it. And um, I was sitting with him one day in the hospice, and he said to me, uh, you and I both know that I'm never going to play my instruments again, and you've always been a bit jealous about my dobro, haven't you? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I think you ought to have it. And he gave it to me, um, which was a bit embarrassing, very nice, but a bit embarrassing because, you know, it had a, had a value. Anyway, without disturbing George, I, um, I saw his wife and I paid her a reasonable price for it. Um, but it still had a problem as far as sound. I recorded an album with a friend and I was having trouble with the intonation. I said, why can't I play in tune anymore? I phoned up a gentleman called Dave King, who is the past master and expert on resonator guitars in the UK. And um, he said, has it got Dobro written on it? And I said, yes. And he said, do you know what year it was built? So I said, yes, 1999. I've still got the little card from Elderly Instruments. This is where George imported it from. <laughs> and he said, oh, well, yes, that's because it was built by Gibson. Huh? Gibson bought out the name and they started building these but they built them all with about a quarter of an inch intonation out. And I realised that as soon as I looked for it, okay. And he said, this is what you do, you buy a cone from Beard, the best Dobro makers um, around at that time, I'm sure still is, and a spider that is built to compensate for the errors in the Gibson build. When I ordered those, I got them shipped over, I went to see him. He spent a whole afternoon, if not more, um, taking this thing to pieces, uh, rerouting, changing the drum, all sorts of stuff, and putting in the new cone. And now, even with very old strings, it works very nicely. So um, I played this with one band. Uh, I haven't played it much. Steels, I have two steels. Um, I think that one is just a Dunlop copy of this. This was made by a gentleman in the States who makes a batch of them once a year and then sells them to the Dobro fraternity throughout the States. Um, and I cannot remember his name. Someone sent me this. The, the kindness of strangers. There we go. So, with ancient strings. <laughs> I had more opportunity to use it. So that is my Gibson made Dobro, uh, let's get the name right, here we are on the elderly doodah, um, model 27 deluxe square neck figured maple, a hard shell case, there we go, that's what it is. So if you have been, thanks for watching, uh, if you have questions, comments, uh, I'd be delighted to see them, I try to answer everything and um, well, if you have been, thanks for watching. Bye.